This is my south facing covered portico and we're looking actually at what should be a blooming alley where I display all the orchids in bloom throughout the warmer months of the year. It is looking very, very not blooming alley like, but can you see that one little gem in the middle enjoying some of the sunshine right here? This is the plant. Shall we go in a little bit closer and have a look at Lelia alvaranguensis? Of course, with a tall spike like this, it's a little bit difficult to film her in her entirety. But I think we can appreciate how beautiful these blooms are. In the sunshine, they also glisten. They have a crystalline effect to them. I'm going to try and keep her in focus, even though she's waving around in the breeze. I still have a few more buds to go, but this is my first time blooming of Lelia albaranguensis. Look at this, isn't this just the cutest? Wow, very, very happy that I've made it to the point of documenting these blooms. Look at how many buds have yet to come. All these still. So there's still a ways to go. I still have to protect these blooms and buds for the filming and the documentation, something I have planned for a future video. I have no idea how long these blooms will last. I don't know if the spike will open completely with all blooms intact, but if I see one fading rather quickly and I need to intervene, then I shall do so. But wow, what do you think? Isn't this the cutest with that lip? Oh, I love my ridiculous Lelias. Orchid blooms, the fruits of the labor of an orchid grower. And I appreciate that you clicked on this video to have a walk around with me on a sunny day here in Southern Spain. And I say that because it'll be the only sunny day for the next two weeks, according to forecast. And I really want to take advantage to just have a little stroll around, show you all my orchids that are in bloom on this very day. It is Dendrobium berryoda season. Happy days. I'm a little bit early with my Dendrobium berryoda, to be honest with you, which is quite surprising, needless to say. She doesn't have much fragrance because the temperatures are a little bit cooler than they normally would be if she were to bloom at the end of March and into April. But you can see that I still have a lot of buds to go and that could possibly extend into the warmer weeks that we hopefully will get one day and then I can enjoy her honeysuckle fragrance. I'm really appreciating this pop of color on my patio. And you can see the next candidate in the background, my gorgeous Cymbidium. So let's head over there and get a little bit closer. Doesn't she look amazing with that dappled sun playing on her petals and sepals? You know that we've had a couple of days of on and off rain, a little bit of drizzle. And so far, thankfully, I have not seen any signs of botrytis. There is a little bit of blemishing going on on some of the petals where the water stayed a little bit longer, where the temperatures were too cool, that even the amount of airflow that I've had recently would not evaporate that water. Never mind. I will take a few little beige blemishes if I have to, but the botrytis I am glad I'm not dealing with. They still look absolutely gorgeous. I have the pot out of the mask because of the rain. Gives the orchid a good flush and if it's raining hard the pot won't flood. <laughs> Making my roots rot. She's looking beautiful. Just gorgeous. Soft. Elegant. No fragrance on this one, but wow. And yay, no aphids either. Look at that. Let's rock down to Tulumnia Avenue and I'm going to keep as still as possible. Here we have, still in bloom, Carmen. Still have two spikes. They're about to fade now. Maybe we'll get some branching, maybe not. Then we have Red Devil. <laughs> Let's get in there. There we go. Red Devil looking a little bit paler than actual real life. Much, much deeper, richer red than on camera. Still looking marvelous. 
then we have little Snow White, my color changer. All the little skirts are now a bright pink. To the naked eye, it's more of a lavender than this bright pink. But pretty, huh? So that's little Snow White. Then we have down here, I don't know what to call it, but I like it as per Michael McCarthy. I have her also down as Tolumnia with white necklace, just to remind myself which folder these images belong to, and I have a reference. And Pomegranate is opening the first bloom of the next branch. Yay! I have another branch going back there, but look, beautiful cluster of blooms coming on a branch with Pomegranate. Then I have Pink Brisht here, also a branching. I have another branch coming down here. There you go. Whether it's going to focus or not, but anyway, there is a branch. But Pink Brisht is coming back to light. Then I have Firm White up here. Isn't that cute? <laughs> Love these little blooms. My little Tulumnia Avenue is rocking it. And just opening is the brown spot. Just opening, started to open yesterday. And now I have some sun that might reflect badly, but there we go. Purdy, purdy colors. Big blooms as well. Beautiful spike. And I can see Bud Blast or what's going on there. Maybe not. Maybe we'll get lucky. But this one is gorgeous and rich with its browns and yellows. Love it. Still have a spike developing here on what could be Red Sun. And here I have what looks like pink brisht, but I would say this one is pink beige because the blooms are much, much bigger and the petals are a little bit more dirty pink than the white on the pink beige. But that's a branch that is blooming right now. Gorgeous. And we have another branch on that same spike and another branch coming on the second spike of another fan. Love me my Tolumnias. And this is the monstrosity itself, Colmenara Masai Red. Beautiful, just beautiful. Majestic is all I can say. So I would prefer to have all the pollen caps stay on tight, let's see. All those white dots, I would love to have them stay on tight so that I can get a spray of blooms that shows me the deep red and then, you know, all the dots going up the spike. But unfortunately, nature, the orchid living outside has different plans and I'm not going to be able to succeed in that goal. The pollen caps, they really, really are quite delicate. Wind and the recent rain has done a little bit of knocking of the blooms. Just Love it. Let me get you in on a bloom that is just opening. It looks amazing. I can't get enough of documenting this orchid. Gosh, when the buds open, it's just, it's so hard to describe what this orchid does for me just because of the richness of that red, almost to the point of black. The buds are just incredible. Now I've had some aphids trying to get at the buds, so a dry paintbrush, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I brush them off. But you can also see the dark color here when it rains. That's just dust and that stays on. It does that with the lips as well. This velvet rich lip, let's see if I can get you. This one is so hard for me to keep clean because of my outside conditions, but that color is, oh, it's so soft, deep, red, rich. But if you also mess with it too much, 
you can destroy the structure. So, you know, rock in a hard place, try to dust the lip, you do a little bit of damage to the natural structure. So I just leave it and accept it for what it is and appreciate what I have here. Here's my Papio Pedalum American Hybrid indoors where it lives all the time in its position. This bloom is hanging on beautifully. The spike is drooping a little bit by the weight of the bloom. I don't want to stake these because if I put a stake in my pot, I'll be piercing through roots. So I let them do what they want and just make sure that the clumsy elbow does not interfere with the longevity of this bloom. Fabulous, just fabulous. Here we have an interesting little grouping. <laughs> Chocolate mint, can you believe it? Still looking wonderful. The pouch hasn't even collapsed yet. It's not showing any signs of going over. So, oh my goodness. Very, very pleased. I think this one's been open now for two months. Looking marvelous. And of course, my favorite little here, <laughs> Lelia Harpophila. Mm, mm, mm. This orange is true to the naked eye. Nailed it. So glad that you can see this orange without me having to insert any pictures. I'm telling you, it's as if it's glowing. I can't stress that enough. The gorgeous, teeny, tiny little curl of the lip, just like with the Alvariguenses. This is, ooh, perfection for me. Star-shaped, little bit of interest in the lip. Just, just amazing. If you could get them in deep red or even just pure white, I would not say no to Harpophila varieties of those colors. And right next to it is a tiny, tiny bloom. Now, you can see that the Harpophila itself is not a large bloom. But this one is the Epidendrum Embrae crossed with Capricornu. And you can see that huh, they don't last very long, but it's the best spike I have had so far. Sorry for that jiggle, even though I'm not able to maintain all the blooms to hold onto that spike so that I can dedicate a fuller spike, because that's my plan. I haven't filmed this one yet, because I was like, okay, the first blooms can drop. You see, I've already lost one down here. Let the first blooms drop and then, you know, open up the next ones and then we get a bushier display. That is not happening. And I'm wondering if it's because it's too cold for them. This is a warm to hot grower. But the spike is looking promising. Last year I only had like three little blooms. They lasted a considerable amount of time, but the spike only had three blooms. So now I've got lots and lots and lots of buds. The blooms aren't lasting that long. But it is a very interesting little bloom, to say the least. Not fragrant. Next to the Harper Filler, she actually becomes a little bit more attractive because her colors are very, very subdued. Oh, and I love the visual of this pairing as well. Just love. My Paphio Pedalum Iona in the foreground. Going strong, also like the chocolate mint, not showing any signs of decline yet. The pouches are still nice and poofy, for lack of a better term. Gorgeous, gorgeous colors just holding on beautifully. And in the background, just opening, I have Dendrobium Royt Banaga. I mean, this would make a beautiful, like a pattern. I can see a reclining chair with one material of this pattern being there and the other material being the pillow to contrast. I think that this pairs up beautifully. Another very long lasting bloom, Roy Tokonaga. So I am glad to see these two open up and still be together because I love this combination. Both of them are not fragrant. And just two blooms holding on for dear life of my Dendrobium antenatum. The first one on the tip has magically disappeared. So I've been treating this orchid again for possible caterpillars. Just a little spritz of garlic infused alcohol to make sure that, you know, if there is one sort of waking up simply because the other ones died off, it doesn't need to be chewing on all my new growths. Beautifully fragrant, 
if the temperatures were warmer. So I'm forfeiting any kind of fragrance this time around, but the spike is holding on really, really well. Okay, no fragrance, but you know what? I just need this touch of color. And as we venture deeper into the confines of the growth space, we come to the winter blooming alley location. I will be putting up stills because lighting is so, so bad and I really don't want to be shaking around too much. We will hear Siliano in the background. He always has something to say the moment I start talking. Trust me, if I'm working at my desk and not saying anything, silence. The minute I say something, a phone call and he has to chime in. So the chirps in the background, Siliano says hi. Right, on the right, we've got Rincolalia Digbiana. My goodness, I am so happy this bloom is lasting so long. Unfortunately, I ripped it early days, but it is lasting really long. And that is what makes me happy. And it is the first time I'm experienced the fragrance that people describe as soapy. It has always been lemony, jasmine -y kind of fragrance for me. Very, very intense and very, very beautiful on the nose. Now I'm experiencing that hint of soapy and it is a little bit off-putting for me. I don't mind a fresh, clean fragrance, but the soap side of it, ooh, it's a bit intense. It's not an elegant soap fragrance that you want to have linger in your nose. It makes you feel a little bit like, oof, no thanks. And uh, you know, you wanna wash your hands again and get yourself rid of that fragrance. So I now have my experience of soapy smelling Rincolalia Dickiana. Next to it, we have a conundrum. It is possibly a Bonara TLDC Fan Thursday, but it could also be an Epidendrum René Marquez crossed with Pseudo Epidendrum. I am not 100% sure, but I will not discount the fact that this orchid may have arrived mislabeled. The label says it is a René Marquez crossed with Rincolalia Digbiana, which is really cool because I at least have one parent. And in bloom, next to its offspring. So whatever it is, it is beautiful and the blooms are lasting very, very nicely, even though it has two pot growers as its parent. I'm enjoying these blooms and the pop of color. In real life, those blooms are more yellow on the lip. On the camera, it comes out very orange. That is not the case. They are very, very canary yellow. Next to that is my pride and joy, my success story, finally, of getting a Sunya green to bloom. And boy, the longevity of these blooms. Wow, I cannot tell you. I am enjoying this one more than I even expected. The fragrance is absolutely divine. It is really a true mojito without the mint. So that is an oxymoron. That doesn't even make a mojito a mojito anymore. But that lemony, fresh sugar fragrance that actually tickles the nose because of the Sprite or whatever soda that you put in there, that tickly feeling when you drink it, that is what you get with a Sunya Green. Delicious lemon sugar, but not too much on the sweet side. It is as fresh as the color is green, if that makes sense. Love this orchid. It's now been open almost three weeks. I've already filmed the clip for Blooms for You because I didn't know about its longevity. So that bloom that you will see in a future video is probably three or four days old and I can smell it no matter where I am in the house. It is beautifully intense. Love it. And then to the far left of that, I've got Sehiawara <laughs> Yokosuka story. I'm sorry, being in Spain, I mean, I can't see the word Sergio and go Sergio. I have to say Sergio. Okay, whatever, let's do this. Sergioara Yokosuka story, still gracing us. I've still got three blooms intact. Beautiful. All in all, in general, this whole row right here is for my eyes and what I like, continuity and colors. It is just perfection. I could add the chocolate mint in here. It still falls into that color scheme. I'm really enjoying the view of my blooming alley while the weather is not yet playing ball. The first two to bloom for my complex Phalaenopsis hybrids is Bubba and Bubalicious also known as Sweet Talk. But now, whoever is watching this video, if you were the one that told me the trade name of Bubber, I think it's Champion's Light 
or Champions Lightning? You see, back in the day when you gave me that name, I did not put it on the tag. I've got it recorded somewhere, but now I'm putting who gave me the name on the tag of the orchids that have a name that I have named otherwise, if that makes sense. So Champions Light or Champions Lightning, I'm not entirely sure. In my collection, they're known as Bubba on the left and Bubblicious on the right. And then, of course, my goodness, Maxillaria variabilis, cousin it, going bonkers still. And I moved him up into the deep south, away from what I would always prefer to have him direct sun in the mornings, because the wind was so, so strong, he was knocked off that short little stand that he's standing on and crashed into the little support that you see on the right here. I was so freaked out, I didn't take a picture. Of course, after assessing if there was any damage, I was regretting the fact I didn't take a picture because I would have loved to have shown you the angle that he was at. It was horrible, and I thought that he had bruised his left side entirely. The only thing that fell off of Cousin It, though, was one extended growth, which you know what? Considering what could have happened, I cannot believe how he on his tiny little low stand, and he is so, so heavy, he was blown over. And I was blown over that it happened. So yeah, I put him up against the fence just in case something happens and I am not around to monitor how strong the wind gusts are going to be. But going absolutely nuts, despite the bump on his head. Gosh, I was so frightened, I cannot tell you. I really thought I had lost like half of him. If he had fallen all the way down onto the ground, he would have crushed that one side where he fell on. And that would have been horrible. So we got lucky. I never ever thought that there is even the slightest chance that he would get blown over. It was crazy. It was really crazy. But anyway, I want to thank you so very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed seeing some blooms. I personally did enjoy walking around on a sunny day with you. Share them while they're still around. Who knows what the next couple of days is going to bring. It's going to get scary here. <laughs> Yuck. Thank you for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition, please, that you stay safe. I would love to see you in the next video. Please take care. Bye.